Come on. in my bones, in my shoulders, in my lungs. And I didn't have much hope. And somebody asked me one time, Brother Marston, if you had to do it over, would you rather not do it? And I honestly said, no, I ain't changing nothing. I've been in church for 62 years, but I found the Lord about two and a half years ago, laying on my back, not knowing if I was going to make it. But I'm so glad this morning, for the Bible says, shout for joy Come on now. to the Lord. All the earth, worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. We're going to do that this morning. Yes. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us and we are what? His people. Isn't that what Pastor Grady preached this morning? Yes, amen. We are His people. Amen. And we, uh, the sheep of His pasture. The Bible says, and here's what I, I love this scripture, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Are you thankful this morning? Come on, look at your neighbor and tell him what you're thankful for this morning. Are you thankful to be alive? Hallelujah. Are you thankful you had breakfast this morning? Are you thankful for the sunshine? Hallelujah. And enter into his courts with praise and give thanks to him and praise his name for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let's lift our hands. Let's lift our hearts. Let's get serious with the Lord this morning. I believe anything could happen. I believe miracles could take place this morning. I believe somebody could get healed. I believe somebody could get the Holy Ghost this morning. It is possible. I can do all things through Jesus Christ that strengthens me. He is the cornerstone. He is the king. He is the master. He loves me when I'm unlovable. He still talks to me in the middle of the night and wakes me up and I feel the presence of the Lord. Come on, let's worship the Lord this morning with everything we got, with every fiber, with everything within our being this morning. Oh Lord, I love you. Come on, let's tell the Lord, I love you, Jesus. I was lost in shame, could not get past my blame till he called my name. I'm so glad he changed me, darkness held me down, but Jesus pulled me out. I'm no longer found. I'm so glad he changed me. See, I'm now a new creation in Christ.
There's something I know this morning, and that's at the mention of Jesus' name. Mountains have to fall. Strongholds are broken, and there are miracles. Amen. You move the mountains, you told the winds and waves be still, cast out demons, bid the empty soul be filled, now there's breakthrough, oh, now there's freedom in your name, you gave us power, and the keys to do the same, you hold Showed us mercy yes, with your mighty miracles. Now there's breakthrough. Oh, now there's freedom in your name. You gave us power and the keys to do the same. Now we proclaim in Jesus' name. Oh, to come up here this morning and let's pray for y'all. I feel this right now in the name of Jesus. 
If we could just have some, some people come and help us pray for them this morning. I really feel like God wants to do something special for them today. Lord, I thank you, God, for being in our midst today, Lord. Lord, you're worthy, God. I thank you, Jesus, for being here today, Jesus. Touch them, God. Yes, God. Oh, you hold redemption. Oh, you made accusers drop their stones. Showed us mercy with your mighty miracles. With your mighty miracles. Now there's breakthrough. Oh, now there's freedom in your name. You gave us power. And the keys to do the same. Now we proclaim Jesus' name. Oh, walls fall down. Jesus' name.
Let's worship him in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, we love you, Lord. We worship you. We give you glory this morning. God, we exalt your name, God. Blessed be the Holy Ghost. We worship you. We give you glory, God. We magnify you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me tell you right now, whenever you say the name of Jesus, I know it's Pentecostals. We get in the habit of just saying it in Jesus' name all the time. But friend, let me tell you, when you approach hell, you better go in the name of Jesus. You better say in the name of the Lord Jesus, devil, I bind you up. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I curse every devil that is attacking my family. I curse every devil that is attacking the church. I curse every devil that would even think about attacking my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you better go with authority when you go. And your only authority is in His name. It does not exist in how loud we get. It does not exist in how low we whisper His name. It's His name. That's where the authority is. But the only way you're going to back up that authority is if you're living your life in obedience to Him. Dirty cops don't get to use it. It only works so long on a dirty cop. That badge only works so many times if he's a dirty cop. Sooner or later, that authority is going to be ripped away from him. And so when you, the only way to have true authority in the Holy Ghost is yes, through the name of Jesus. But if I am not submitted to that name, if his name is not truly Lord of my life, I'm not going to walk in the authority that I need to walk in. He'll beat some devils off of you anyway, just because he's God. But to truly go where he wants you to go, you've got to be submitted to that name. It don't happen just because I know what he said in the word. If you ask anything in my name, say, I know I know all the scriptures. Yeah. But I've lived this a while too. Have you ever asked in his name and it didn't happen like you thought it was going to happen? Because it wasn't a magic trick. But when you're walking, none of us are perfect. But you can be imperfect and still be submitted to God. Yes. You can. A guy told me that years ago, and I, didn't, I knew his struggles, and I didn't understand what he was talking about. I knew what he struggled with. He said, Grady, he said, yes, I struggle with that. But when God tells me to do something, I do it. If God says fast three days, I fast three days. If he says pray six hours, I pray six hours. If he says he, he still struggled with that sin, but when God would speak to him, he would submit and do whatever the Lord was telling him to do. And I understand that better now. You can struggle with things and still be submitted to the Lord. God knows the difference between struggling with something while being submitted or just being rebellious. But if we're going to operate in the authority of Jesus' name, it's going to have to be as we are submitted to Him. Amen. We're glad to have Brother Jeremy and Sister Ashley Ivy here today. Amen. They are friends. They've been friends for a long time with Sister Melissa and Brother Stephen. And they're going to sing here in a minute. Well, he's already on the drums. So when he gets off the drums, I'm going to have him testify. Let's continue to worship the Lord. I find myself alone again. My hopes and dreams are caving in. I find myself alone again. Lord, I'm wondering when will this
you again Take control I'm giving in I find myself with you again With broken knees I'm in there when we were in the service I want to tell you something this compliments our church a lady came to me afterwards and she said I've been watching your live services and I've only known her for about a month and she's of a dif different denomination that doesn't matter but I want you to understand why she said this she says I've been watching your live services and I feel something that I've never felt before she said y'all praise and I hear the sound y'all worship and I hear the sound your pastor is speaking and I hear Woo! praise the Lord amen out she even said that sister Tillman she's like I hear that lady all the time saints of God your praises matter this morning your praises matter this morning in this place while you are yet living we should worship the Lord hallelujah sing the chorus one more time sing the chorus beautifully bro Grace like a river washes 
Jesus, thank you, God, for being in this place this morning, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we give God some praise in here this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't he just wonderful? Amen. Hallelujah. He's so powerful. Amen. I'm so thankful for what he's done for me. Amen. So thankful. He is so wonderful. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful for all that God is doing. Thank you for the anointing that was in here. That's still in here this morning. Hallelujah. Can we praise him? Hallelujah. Can we praise him? Hallelujah. I don't know about you. But I've got a praise that's inside of me. Hallelujah. He's been good to me, Brother Grady. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something. I, I, oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. That teaching this morning, I loved it so much. Amen. And, and then when the brother was up here and he was talking about how in the last two years he was talking about the cancer that he dealt with. And I just give you guys just a brief testimony. I want to get out of the way. And, I've just, we've enjoyed it so much. Amen. We really have. I thank God for Melissa and Stephen. He, he's over there. <laughs> well, all of you, such a, such beautiful people. We love each and every one of you. Uh, but he was, he was talking about his situation. And, you know, I believe that we're made overcomers through the word of our testimony. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. That's just, and uh, God's been so good to me. I feel like, you never feel like God's been better to you than he has been to everybody else. <laughs> you feel like he loves you more than he loves anybody else. Like, you know, Lord, you loved me when I was here. Even in this situation, you still love me. And I thank God for it. You know, um, I feel like there's, when you, when you go through certain storms, you get a connection with somebody before you even really talk to them. And the brother was talking about his situation with cancer and what he went through. In 2012, I was diagnosed with lymphoma. And uh, I talked about it on my Facebook Live the other day. Um, but me and Brother Grady talked about it. 2012, I was diagnosed with cancer. And I didn't know at the time, your brother, brother Grady was talking about it. When situations come our way, you know, you got to have adult faith. You got to have grown up faith. And, and so this situation come, my daughter was just barely a year old. My son was a few months old. And the doctor came in and he told me, he said, you know, Mr. Ivy, he said, you have, you have lymphoma. And me, I didn't know what that was because until a situation we went through, you kind of, you don't really have sympathy for a situation until you know it. Can we be real? As, Come on. You know, you say, oh, well, so-and-so's going through something. You, oh, we'll be praying for you. But then when it comes home to you, then it's different, right? Come on, somebody. So he, he leaves the room. Literally, this is how it went down. He said, you have lymphoma? And he walked out the room. And I'm just like, the nurse comes in. And I said, what's lymphoma? And she said, that's cancer. And then she walked out of the room. And I'm just like, my goodness. So a depression grabbed me, anxiety, fear, cried myself to sleep every night. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, and I'm forgetting all the promises of God. But he said, I'm going to raise you up. I'm going to, you're going to do things for me. But ain't it something how when the storm comes to your life, you forget about what God told you. You forget where he said he was going to take you. I'm reminded in the scripture when he told the disciples, he said, let us go over to the other side. But in between a storm came. We forget that he's already told you the end. He's already told you you was going over. I I got. <laughs> we we forget that thing. We forget, and I I remember a few weeks that went by, and it seemed like every night. And I'm I'm a big faith man because I believe without faith it's impossible to please God. I'm I'm big on. I know God can do anything. I'm one of those kind of faith kind of people. Those of you in here, say you may be wanting a house, and it just seemed like everything's against you. Go buy a doormat. You do it on faith. You do it on faith. If you want a child and the doctors told you there's no hope, go buy a onesie. You step out on faith. That's you know God is able. That's just how I am. I believe I believe God can do that. But I I went to the doctor and I had the, the masses around my esophagus and my lungs were about this big and you know just just terrible. And, and something hit me and I was talking to Brother Grady about it uh, when we got down here and I told him I said I, I can't explain it. But you know, he'll give you a peace that passes all understanding. Yes, Where it makes no sense to everybody else, you'll have peace in your storm. Yes. You, you, they, they say, you should be good just losing it and be, be ballistic and not knowing what's going on. No, let me tell you something. My God gave me peace. The day that I went, they were, they were going to put a, 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 a port in my chest and start me on chemotherapy. And uh, they, they told me, they said, you know, we're going to go through some questions, so we want to make sure that everybody's on the same page, so you know what's going on, and we know what's going on. 
So I'm in there, pre-op. They come into the room. This young lady came in. She was, uh, she was with the uh, anesthesia. And she asked me the question. She said, Mr. Ivy, do you know why you're here? Do you know what we're doing? And I said, yes, ma'am. I said, you guys are going to do this. I said, but this is what's going to happen. I said, you guys are going to open me up. And you're not going to find anything. Yeah, come on. And she said, and she looked at me. She said, that's a good attitude to have. I said, no, ma'am. I said, it's not an attitude, it's a lifestyle because my Bible tells me that we walk by faith and not by sight. <laughs> Next thing I know, she started crying. She said, I'm backslid. She said, I've been out of church. And she said, I needed that. She said, would you pray with me? I prayed with her. Let me tell you something. You need to be like Brother Grady was talking about. It don't just need to be just like a little small talk with God. You need to have a relationship with God that no matter the need, no matter the situation, you can touch God with somebody. We got too many folks need to get prayed up before they can talk to God. <laughs> I'm not, I'm just testifying. I'm, I'm. <laughs> So the next lady, she came in and she said, you know what we're doing today? And I said, yes, ma'am. I said, you know, you guys are going to do this, this, and this. I said, but again, you're going to open me up and you're not going to find the cancer. And she said, wow. She said, you know, we've only had one other person that's ever said that. And I said, well, what happened to them? She said, we opened them up. We didn't find no cancer. I said, well, I'm fixing to I'm going to be the second one. I'm going to be the second one. So to make a long story short, I go into surgery. And this is, you know, part of my testimony. I, I, I could go all day about how good God's been, but I'm not going to do that. But I wake up, and I, I was telling Brother Grady about this yesterday, and it was kind of funny. But I came to in post-op, and everything was so blurry. And the nurse that was sitting at the foot of my bed, Brother, her, her hair was just so bright, blonde, and everything was so bright. And the first thing I said was, my God, I didn't make it. <laughs> I just thought, you know, he done carry me over. He done carry me over. But uh, and I said that out loud, and she said, no, Mr. Ivy, she said, you're very much with us. I said, oh, yes, thank God. She said, I got some more good news for you. I said, what's that? She said, we could not find the cancer. I said, could you tell me one more time? Could you tell me one more time? She said, we can't find the cancer. My God will do it. He's able. I tell you this, and I'm getting out of the way. Hallelujah. You may feel like you're on the backside of the desert right now. There's some of you right now in the storm and you don't know what you're going to do. But Moses asked the Lord, he said, who do I say sent me? And he said, I am that I am. There is, li listen, there is an interpretation to that statement. If you look up the definition to I am that I am, he said, I am committed and I will complete. When God commits himself to your situation, it's already complete. You ought to praise God. Let him give you the bad news because good news is on the way. Somebody give God some praise. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Thank you, Lord. We're going to continue. Praise the Lord. If you brought an offering, you can make it. Make your way down to the front this time. God bless you as you give. What's oh, up, glad morning?
Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord. He all the da 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 Thank you, Lord. Would you lift up your hands and let's worship Him for one more moment. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. God, we love you, Lord. We worship you. We magnify you. Blessed be the Holy Ghost. Glory be to God. God, we worship you and exalt your name, God. Blessed be the name of our God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Worthy is your name. Lord God, we worship you. We give you glory, God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Holy Ghost. Lord God, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. I appreciate what Brother Ivy said. You just don't know until it happens to you. So the next time somebody comes to you with a situation, don't just haphazardly say, okay, brother, we'll be praying for you. Have a little compassion. Give them a little bit of your time and your concern. Even though you may not be able to understand, you, owe, you at least can give them compassion. You can give them compassion. Sunday, and I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit in my message, but uh, Sunday when I went to the hotel was where my dad was and he passed away. I went in the hallway, and, I, and I'm not, I don't mean this. If you know the man, it's nothing against him. But they had a chaplain there, and uh, I'm sure he's a wonderful guy. I'm not, it's not against him. I don't know him. I'm not talking against him. But as I was in the hallway, and I saw these two officers standing out in the hallway, uh, I told him who I was, and the compassion that they had for me in that moment ministered to me more effectively than anything else almost that day. The chaplain came, do you need anything? You guys okay? He was nice, nothing against him. But he didn't operate, it. and he does that all the time maybe, and I, I, don't, I don't know. But I got more from those two cops, who I don't even know if they were Christians. But their compassion, their look of empathy and concern. And I told them, I, may, I said, look guys, I know you don't know me. You might have been just doing your job, I said, but before you leave today, you need to know that you helped me. You ministered to me. I don't even know if you know God, I think I said to him, but I said you ministered to me is what you did. Compassion goes a long, long way, friend. Don't you think it doesn't, because it does. Even if you don't know their pain, compassion will minister to them. I don't know if they ever lost their dad. I don't know if they've, I don't know. But I didn't need to know. Their compassion ministered to me. Amen? Amen. Well, Sister Annette Jones is not here because I've been announcing the wrong date for the last three weeks. She'll be here next Sunday, her and her husband, Brother Bubba Jones. And uh, she'll be helping us, leading us in worship. And Bubba will get up in here and testify and hopefully get drunk in the Holy Ghost and show out for you. <laughs> he don't show out for people. I just like to watch him when he gets drunk in the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you've never seen somebody get drunk in the Holy Ghost, I always say, you've got to see Bubba Jones get drunk in the Holy Ghost. He may not, but... Nonetheless, it's a, it's, a, it's a treat. It's a blessing. Ladies' prayer every Thursday morning, 10 a.m. Also, thank you for all of the donations that were given for the hurricane relief. We got those to Louisiana, to Lake Charles safely. Uh, Brother Braswell brought them for us. He was already going. 
And praise the Lord, he went instead of us. Because it took him ten and a half hours to get there and twelve and a half to get back. So I love Brother Brazel. He's my friend. But I said, thank God it was you. Thank God it was him and not me. Amen. So the traffic was horrendous, obviously, because of all that was going on. But thank you so very much. Uh, it's not put on the national news. Everybody's talking about that. But uh, please continue to pray for their peace. Uh, there is just a... Uh, pray for Stacy's parents. We're not going to announce, but they, they really need some help uh, for their home situation. Uh, they're not... They may still... God's going to provide, but they didn't have all the help they thought they were going to get at first. And so we need to pray. I want to pray for Daryl McCauley. Debbie too, but she, she's got all the faith. She'll just say, God will provide. That's all she ever does, because she will. But Mr. Daryl don't think the same way, and he wants to take care of it. And I want us to pray right now for Daryl McCauley. Lord, we lift up Daryl McCauley right now, God. Lord, I ask you to minister, God, to Daryl, God. We plead the blood of Jesus over him, and we pray for the Holy Ghost to strengthen him. Let the presence of God overshadow him. Let him know that help is on the way, God. Let him know that he's not helpless and hopeless, but that if he'll turn to you, God, there is help. There is hope, God. There is strength to be found in Jesus Christ. Lord, make a way where there seems to be no way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I announced it in Sunday school, but thank God. I'm glad to have my mom with us. Amen. She's 84 years old, can still bounce up off that couch and say, let's go. Just the last few days, I said, well, you want to go for a ride? Yes, let's go. Just, just I mean, just get up and move. Every once in a while, she has a little wobble, but outside of that, she's pretty quick. <laughs> Mama, they've been knowing about that wobble long before you showed up today. I've been talking about you for a long time. <laughs> yeah. she, she loves going to see the old folks at the old folks' home. <laughs> at 84 years old, she's strong. She's tough. I'm telling you, it shows in my sister. It shows in her. It's just uh, strong women in our family. And I'm grateful for that. Strong men too, but I just, I'm grateful for the strong mom that I have. Amen. Amen. We're going to turn to the book of Romans. Thank all of you. I can't even begin to thank you enough. I, call, I made a one call, told some of you, you can stand for the reading of the word. Um, thank you. I, I mean, I just can't say thank you enough. I told some that came Monday night, I said, look, don't just bring no food in here. You come in here and pray. You get in here and you pray with me. <laughs> we need you. We need the church. Amen. But I do thank you for respecting our privacy. Monday, I needed that day. I couldn't get a lot of phone calls and explanations and all that stuff. I just, that was not a day to deal with all that. And, uh, but nonetheless, thank you for those of you that have prayed, brought food, uh, just supported us. And uh, I, I could just say thank you for the rest of the service and it still wouldn't be enough. Amen. Amen. Thank all of you. Thank all of you very much. Like I told somebody, I said, I might be the pastor, but I need the church just as much as they need me. I'm still the church. I'm still a saint of God. I'm still a part of the family of God. Amen. Yes, indeed. I know I have to be strong, but I don't mind falling apart in front of you. I like it. I want you to come over and grab me around the shoulder and, and snot on me and pray on me. I just don't bother me one bit. Don't bother me. I've always made it very, uh, trans I've been very transparent. We're nothing without God anyway. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 8, starting at verse 26 and verse 27. And verse 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Somebody say, I need some help. I need some help. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth, he knows what he's doing. What is the mind of the Spirit? Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Father, we thank you, Lord, for somebody say, my help is on its way. 
Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word today, God. Lord, we ask you to minister, God, today in the house of the Lord. Let the Holy Ghost strengthen us and help us today. Let the anointing, God, strengthen us and bless us today. Thank you for your presence that has already been in the house of the Lord today. Bless your people in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Why don't you turn around and tell somebody you love them before you're seated. Now, if you haven't already learned, you need to learn how to give a Cole Randall, I love you. <laughs> Cole Randall, burn, burn a hole right through your soul with that I love you. <laughs> hey, let me tell you what, he transformed his entire workplace. A bunch of hardened, unbelieving, God-hating people that, that will say I love you now when they see him. <laughs> he has transformed the whole place. God's using that I love you, brother. God's using it. It also helps to know that he means it. <laughs> he means it. Thank God. Hallelujah. Let's worship. I, I'm just, I want to take a moment here and just, I want to talk to the Lord just a moment. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. God, we love you. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. God, I thank you for people like Brother Cole and people like Brother Marston, Brother Overstreet, God, the Roys and, Lord, the Hendricks and the Warners and the Whites and everybody in this place, God. All the wonderful people of God that are a part of Calvary United, God. They've made such an impact this week in my life and in my family's lives. <laughs> my God, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. In Jesus' name. My mom said, you have such amazing, wonderful, genuine people at your church. She said, it's unreal how genuine and down to earth and loving they are. I said, I know, Mama. I said, that's the only reason I, didn't, I hadn't moved back to Louisiana yet. <laughs> I said, I've got so much love here. That's the only reason. My goodness. Amen. No, I love Florida. I'm in God's will, but... Uh, all of you have made living here away from our family so much easier. Poor old sister Melissa, she's only an hour away from mama and is already missing her. <laughs> so girl, try six hours. <laughs> try six. Amen. Amen. I, I don't have a... Well, my message is my help is coming. My help is coming. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, this week, whenever my dad passed Sunday afternoon... I didn't do a, I didn't put a whole lot of thought process into it. I just, I knew I needed to get to the hotel where he had passed away. I knew, to, I knew I needed to be there. My mom left a voicemail and uh, I couldn't think properly of who I needed to call or what I needed to do or, and what I needed to do with my children. I knew Stacy was here. She was here. She got a phone call. And, but it was in the middle of all that chaos, in the middle of all that, that uneasiness and, 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 and uncertainty that, that somebody just grabbed, Brittany just grabbed our kids and said, go. It was in the middle of all that that I show up at the hotel and there's Brother Roy and Brother Glenn and Brother Randall and Brother Cole and, and I don't remember who else, got, Brother, Brother Lauren was there. And, and it's, it was just like my help was there. <laughs> I didn't have to ask for it. I didn't ask anybody to come. I didn't pray and ask God to send anybody. But my help was there because my help knew that I needed help. And friend, let me tell you, God knows when you need help. You don't always have to scream, help me, Jesus. He'll already send the help when he sees that you have a need. He'll send the peace. He'll send the joy. He'll send the strength. God will send the help. I didn't ask Lauren and Brother Lauren and Brother Roy. I didn't ask anybody to come. I, w I, did, I wasn't trying to get anybody involved. I couldn't think about getting anybody involved. I was going through too much to, to start worrying about and thinking about who I could get involved and who I could get to help. And sometimes we are so under the load, we don't even think about calling on Jesus the way we ought to. But can I tell you today, he knows that and he understands that. And if you've been walking with him, you don't have to call. He'll just show up. You see, I have a relationship with these guys. I have a relationship with these ladies. And they knew I needed help, so they showed up. 
I didn't have to ask. I didn't have to beg. I didn't have to scream. I didn't have to holler. They just showed up. But you know what? They probably wouldn't have done that if I hadn't been talking to them the last six years. Probably wouldn't have done that if I had no relationship with them. If I've never invested into them. And it's, it goes the same with God. When you're investing into God, when you're investing into your relationship, He knows there's times you can't think about prayer. You can't think about anything but just what you're going through. But I'm telling you, He will send the help. God will send the help every single time because He knows what you're going through. The, whole, the, the Lord said, right, the Scripture says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. I know the Holy Ghost is for salvation. I know the Holy Ghost is so that we can prophesy and operate in the gifts and run off devils and do all that. But don't you ever forget that the Holy Ghost is a helper. Don't you ever forget the Holy Ghost is a helper. The Spirit of God is here to help you walk through your trials. He's here to help you handle the situations that you don't know how to handle yourself. You can't handle yourself. You don't have the physical, mental, spiritual capacity to handle it yourself. Because you don't even know what it is you're going through. Maybe if you understood, maybe if you knew what you were dealing with, that's why so many people, as they get older, they have a hard time handling life when they break down because they are out of control. They can't handle things the way they used to. That's one of the struggles of Stacy's dad right now. He's, he's a go-getter. He's a doer. He, he would have already had that entire place rebuilt already. But all he can do is go look at it and go back inside and sit down because his health isn't great. And because he, he just don't have the physical ability to do it all. And, and he's, he's, he's hitting up some walls. But I'm telling you, it, 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 when we get in those situations, if we've been walking with the Lord, He sends our help. He sends our help. The Bible said that the Holy Ghost helps our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. There's things you go, you have no idea how to pray. You think you know how to pray your way through something, but you don't. You don't. <laughs> uh -uh. You can read all the prayer books you want to. You can talk, you can go through all the prayer conferences you can go to. You can learn all the right words. You can look at it all. But until the Holy Ghost starts praying through you, sometimes you have no idea what to pray for. You don't know what's coming at you. You don't know what's leaving you. You don't know what's going on tomorrow. You don't know what's going on in the next 30 seconds. But the Holy Ghost knows. The Spirit of God knows what's coming and what's going. What's trying to kill you, what's trying to help you. Who's trying to support you, who's trying to turn on you. The Holy Ghost knows all of it. That's why you got to let the Spirit pray through you to help with your infirmities. You don't know who's going to turn their back on you tomorrow. You don't know who's going to walk out of your home tomorrow, walk out of your life and, and cause you to fight. You don't know. But the Spirit of God knows. He knows and He prepares you in prayer is what He does. He gets you ready for that. He prepares you. The Lord showed me at the end of last year, at the beginning of this year, that my dad was going to be leaving. I wasn't totally shocked. I knew he was leaving. I didn't know how, didn't know when, but I knew he was going to die. I saw him in a field. He was looking out in a field, and there was a star out there, and he just waved goodbye to us, and he walked off in the field. And so I've been preparing myself all year. Amen. I called my brothers and sisters. I said, I don't know when, I don't know where, I don't know how, but he's not going to be with us a whole lot longer. And y'all need to be praying. Y'all need to be getting ready for it. See, things were di Things are different. It doesn't mean it's good. But things are different when God is preparing you. You can carry it differently. You can handle it differently. I know there's other situations that are far worse. But I'm just saying, God knows the unique situations you deal with in life. You're made up differently emotionally than I'm made up. I can handle things you can't handle and you handle things that I can't handle. And God knows all of that. And when you get in the Holy Ghost, you don't know what to pray for. But I feel like when you're in prayer and the, the, the Holy Spirit of God begins to intercede through you, He begins to strengthen those weak areas in your life. That little area where you'd normally fall apart if somebody turned their back on you, you've been praying every morning. 
every morning and he's just over there massaging that weakness and building up that weakness and and guarding that weakness if need be and then when they do walk out your immediate thought is I'm gonna lose it but then all of a sudden I'm not losing it I should be losing it right about now brother John they stabbed me in the back I should care at least more than this hey I'm talking from experience I've been through situations where God was getting me ready and I thought, shouldn't I at least be hurt over that? He was my best friend. Well, maybe it'll come one day. I don't know. And I mean, did I not love him? I had to question myself. Did I not love my best friend? He just stabbed me in the back. He said something. But you see, I was in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praying every day and I didn't know what to I didn't say, oh God, get me ready for the day my best friend stabs me in the back. Oh, God, I'm watching him like a hawk. I know it's coming. No. Prepare me, oh, God, for Tuesday morning at 7 o'clock when I get the news that he's turned his back on me and he's been talking bad about me this last year. Is that how you all pray? No. But what you do, you let the Spirit begin to take over. And God sees that Tuesday morning coming when your best friend's going to walk out on you. God sees that Tuesday morning when your spouse looks at you and says, I'm not in love with you anymore. God sees that Tuesday morning when your child looks at you and says, I don't want nothing to do with you. Don't ever call me again. Don't ever fool with me. God sees all that. He sees all that. But if I'm not praying and letting the Holy Ghost pray through me, it's like an 18-wheeler hits you. It'll hurt even if you are praying. But somewhere you just get up. Something, something just... And you think, I believe I can go to church anyway. Praise God. <laughs> I believe I still love God anyway. I believe I can still let somebody get close to me again because it'll be all right. I, I believe I can handle it. I believe I can deal with it because I've been praying. I didn't know what I was needing to pray for, but the Holy Ghost has been praying through me. He's been bearing my infirmities. He's been helping me with my infirmities. He's been helping me with my infirmities because you don't know what to pray for as you ought to. I don't know what to pray for as I ought to. We can sit around here all day and make requests and yes, 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 but nobody knows like the Holy Ghost what we need to be praying for. You got to get it. You got to get in a place where you're beyond your English. You got to let the Spirit groan through you. Let the Spirit take over you and just groan. And it, it bears, it helps you with those infirmities. It'll help you with physical infirmities, spiritual infirmities, emotional infirmities. It will help you with every infirmity known to man. It'll help you. You know, I, I, don't, I don't talk about this. It's, it's been 20 years now, but my nephew, when he died in 2001, I've told some people around here, but um, that Sunday morning, Brother Nugent was going to preach his uh, sermon, his funeral, at 2 o'clock. And um, so I went to church that Sunday morning and I go to church and I start worshiping God. I'm in the altar just worshiping and my nephew had died, I think, Friday. And I mean the joy of the Holy Ghost come over me. I'm talking just like waves of the joy of the Lord. And I'm talking waves of the, just washing over me, washing over me, washing over me, washing over me. And so I left, I left the church that morning and I stopped it, got something to eat. And I'm driving to the funeral home and I've got a smile wrapped around my entire head. I'm talking from the back all the way around. Didn't matter how you looked at me. From behind, you could see my teeth. <laughs> smiling. I'm smiling. I mean, I'm so full of the joy of the Lord. I pull up in that funeral home and it hit me. I was like, whoa, you can't go in there like that. I had to wipe the smile off, calm down. I had to literally, emotionally, mentally process it and say, they won't understand that. But if God's not going to be there then, what's the, when is He going to be God? That didn't do any injustice to my nephew. I broke when we closed that casket. I fell apart. I think about him all the time to this day. What would he look like? What would he be doing? I think about him a lot. He was like a little brother to me. He was only five years younger than me. Think about him all the time. But I needed God when I walked in that funeral home. Yeah. 
Because I was going in as a witness. I was going in as a representative of a man of God. And those people needed to see that. They needed to see somebody that could hold it together, not out of a bunch of fakery. But they would ask, they, I don't know how you spoke like that. I said, it was nothing but God. Amen. I didn't take no credit for it. And the same thing. My dad passed away Sunday. And I went to the hotel. Another, he talked about the help. When those guys were there, we went into a meeting room. And, and I don't know. I just I went in that meeting room. The, the investigator was there. And he was wanting to ask questions. My mom was sitting there. I said, I said, sir, I said, look, I don't know what you got to ask my mama, but I'm about to pray. I said, he said, that's right. I said, no, I'm about to pray loud. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> I just told her, I said, I'm about to pray loud. And he's like, I don't care, whatever, you know. And I said, I don't think you understand. I'm sorry, this ain't the, I'm, no offense, mama, this ain't the little Catholic boy no more. This ain't the little Presbyterian boy. The Catholics, they pray quiet. I said, this, this little Pentecostal boy ain't about to pray quiet. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I don't think you understand, sir. And I said, go get them. Get the rest of them in here. And man, we got to talking in tongues and praying. I mean, the Holy Ghost just swept into that meeting room. He will help. He will help with your infirmities. He will be there. Did he change the circumstance? No. Nothing changed. Everything was exactly the same except for my state of mind. That was it. I'm not trying to make, I'm trying to tell somebody the Spirit helps our infirmities. He'll do the same for you. He will uphold you. He will strengthen you. He will help you. He may not always change the circumstance, but He'll always be right there. He'll be there. Don't let bitterness and anger and all that stuff creep in and, and keep him from helping. So Monday came along and I began to write about my dad on Facebook and I fell completely apart then. You're going to go through your problems regardless. You're not going to bypass your problems. You're not going to bypass your pain, your grief, your hurt, any of that. You're not going to bypass it, but the Spirit's going to help. <laughs> He's going to help. So I'm bawling and squalling. Air conditioner repair man rings the doorbell. <laughs> Walking right through my living room. I'm saying, I'm sorry, man. I lost my dad. <laughs> he said, I'm sorry, man. I'll just go on, you know. Talk about bad timing. So I fell apart Monday. And Tuesday morning I woke up and at 10 o'clock, 10 15, God dealt with me about doing a little mini service just in my home with my family. And the heaviness just came over me. The rea not the heaviness of God, but the heaviness of the reality. Just because the Spirit helps you with your infirmities, you don't get to bypass reality. You're going you're gonna to face it. Anybody who, y'all know, not one of you don't know it, you've all had to face reality. So for about five minutes, all I could feel is just this massive heaviness of just, it's gone. It's over. Today's the day. We say our goodbyes. And about 30 seconds after whenever I said that, another wave of the Holy Ghost just swept in. And I started worshiping in my house. And I started shouting in my house. Up and down the hallway, talking in tongues. Just worshiping and shouting and, and just magnifying God. The Spirit is helping our infirmities. In fact, my brothers and sisters, they drove six hours to get here and they, they couldn't stay overnight so they got up and got here at noon and I hadn't seen my brothers and sisters in eight months so when they walked in I said hey I'm smiling as big as you I mean I had to come back to reality I was so full of the joy of the Lord I was just excited to see my brothers and sisters and they're walking in sad you know you know and I sorry you know but then I, I kind of calmed down a little. I was excited. Now they're used to me. I've always been a little bit different than the rest of the family. So nothing surprises them. Always been the loud one. Always been the ones got thrown off a little bit or, you know, whatever. Just so, so when they saw me get become a Pentecostal, it just fit right in with anything else I'd ever done. Something strange, something odd, something way too far into. It just, it fit right in. They didn't have any problem with it. That's just Grady. He can't do anything halfway. Can't be normal like the rest of us. Never could. 
never could. But I was in the, it kept moving on me. And my brothers and sisters are there. And, and I'm still mag I'm still worshiping right in front of them. Not in front of them, but around the house. I'm worshiping, I'm worshiping. I said, guys, look, don't mistake my excitement and my zeal for a lack of love for my dad. I said, I've got so much of the joy of the Lord in me right now. I said, I feel God just strengthening me right now so much. I said, but don't mistake it. Don't mistake it. I said, this is God with us right now. And they understood that. They know me well enough to know. But the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. He helps. I wasn't praying about that Sunday morning when I was here at church. I wasn't praying about what was going to happen. And neither are you praying about what's going to happen to you in the next five years, ten years, thirty seconds, or two days. Because you don't even know how to do that. But if you'll just get in the Spirit, if you'll just get in the Spirit, hallelujah. He said He's going to make intercession for the saints according to God's will. Not according to your desires, not according to what you think you need, not according to the way you think your life ought to go, but according to the will of God. You say, how do I find the will of God? You get in the Spirit and let the Holy Ghost pray for you. He knows the will of God. He knows the mind of God. I, I never prayed, God, would you give me revival in my hometown high school? Would you let me go there when the twin, tra twin uh, towers get blown up. I never prayed that. I said, would you please open a door and let me teach Bible study in my hometown high school. I never prayed that. About as most as it ever went, God helped me witness to my friends. But I just got in the Holy Ghost. And all of a sudden, something beautiful opens up. Because it was always the will of God from the beginning of time that I walk in my hometown high school and do Bible studies and reap a harvest there. Yes, that's right. It was always the will of God, but I never knew that. But I got in prayer and the Spirit began to make intercession according to the will of God. I can't pray. I, can't, I don't even have the mindset to pray what needs to be prayed. So if I can encourage you or compel you to do anything today, it's to get in the Holy Ghost and let the Spirit pray for you. Let Him pray through you. Let Him intercede according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are called according to His purpose. That comes after praying in the Spirit. It's hard to accept that, isn't it? We know all things work together for good. Brother Glenn called me the other day. He told me something the Lord told me told him and he said I, I know it's hard to see that right now I said Glenn I feel the witness of the spirit it doesn't matter what I see <laughs> it doesn't matter what I see and it doesn't matter what I don't see I feel the witness of the spirit when you told me that and that's that's the key friend you've got to get the witness of the spirit in your life of saying no matter what it looks like no matter what it seems like God is at work something beautiful is going to come out of this something beautiful will come out of every tragedy that you ever ha are handed or ever dealt with it's always there it's always there your help is coming I didn't ask brother Roy brother Lauren brother Glenn brother Cole I didn't ask them to come they were just there when I needed them because <laughs> that's what God does and that's what God's people are supposed to do and that's what they do and that's what the spirit will do he'll just be there when you need him let's all stand thank you Jesus all things work together for good to them that love God he never said all things are good Make no mistake that God does not call all things good. Some are just pure evil. Some are just tragic. Some are just horrible. He didn't even say give thanks for all things. He said give thanks in all things. <laughs> God never said you had to thank Him for tragedy, but you can thank Him in tragedy. 
And after you come out of it and you see the other side of it, you can say, God, I thank you for allowing that tragedy because now I see what you've done in it. I've seen what you've done in it. You know, I can't, I can't put it under a telescope or a microscope, should I say. But all I know is after my nephew died in 2001, something incredibly beautiful was born out of it. And I don't know. I can't make sense of what happened to my nephew. Just, but something beautiful came out of it. I can handle tragedy as long as something beautiful comes out of it. <laughs> And when you belong to God, something beautiful always comes out of it. Yes. Let's lift up our hands to the Lord today. In Jesus' name, we love you, Lord. We give you glory, God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord God, we worship you this morning. We give you glory, God. We thank you for helping us, God, in our infirmities. We thank you for the Holy Ghost that is the, our helper that walks with us and talks with us because he knows what is the mind of God and he makes intercession according to the will of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let, let me, you know, with my dad, my situation, this situation, um, God didn't warn me exactly when. He didn't exact warn me exactly how, when, nothing. He, he didn't tell me none of that. But I'm not saying it was the will of God for him to go that day. I don't know. I'm not even getting in all that. But he said all things work together for good according to them that love God. And the Bible said the Spirit helps our infirmities, makes intercession according to the will of God. What I did know was the will of God is that I was strengthened right in the middle of it all. And I could carry it in a way that I could not have carried it had it been different. And all of you are the same situation. There's, some, there's those of you that have great loss, have suffered great loss, and we as a church have gone on. But you're still dealing with your loss. You're, Brother John, Brother Jack, people have great, had great loss. And I tell you what, just like Brother Ivy said, I feel a little bit different today towards them. It touches you. It touches you. It really does. But I want you to know that if you're still dealing with loss today, if you're still dealing with infirmities, the Spirit of God is still available to help you. Brother Cole told me the other day, he said, you know, Grady's pastor, he said, uh, he said, uh, I lost my mom when I was 11 years old and it was tragic. He said, I still ride around to this day and it'll just hit me and I'll just start crying. I didn't know that about him because he don't talk about it. You see, but those are situations that I can't help with so much because I'm not riding around with you in your car. And you're not riding around with me in my car, but guess who is? Yeah. God's right there. The Holy Ghost is right there. He's the one that's going to comfort you on those days. He's the one that's going to bring you some peace and bring you some solace on those days. I don't need God to tell me all the reasons why. All I need God to do is this right here. I don't need God to explain anything. This is all I need right here. I understand, son. Yes. I love you. I'm here with you. I don't need all the details. I don't need God to figure it all out and give me an explanation. I just need this. And you see, that's what the Spirit does. Doesn't always give you the answers, but He just says, it's all right. I'm right here. I'm with you. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to forsake you. Thank you, Brother Roy. Thank you, Jesus. Would you lift up your hands to the Lord? These altars are open this morning if you want to come and ask the Lord for some help today. Hallelujah. We're all dealing with situations in our lives that we need a little bit of help. Yours might be a physical infirmity. For others, it might be a spiritual or mental infirmity. But I'm telling you, Jesus wants to help you with it. He wants to send you the help that you need today. He wants to send you the comfort and the strength that you need today that only He can give. In Jesus' name. Lord, 
Make me a house Make me a house of prayer A house of prayer Lord, make me a house Make me a house of prayer A house of prayer Make me a house of prayer, a house of prayer, oh, oh, oh Lord, make me a house, make me a house of prayer, a house of prayer, fire on my altar, never burn out. Fire on my altar, never burn down. Fire on my altar, never burn down. Make me a house of prayer. May the fire on my altar never burn down. Fire on my altar, never burn down. Fire on my altar, never burn down. Make me a house of prayer. Oh Lord, make me. burn out the fire on my altar never burn out make me a house of prayer oh, may the fire on my altar never burn out fire on my altar never burn out fire on my altar never burn out make me a house of prayer oh, Never burn down, fire on my altar, never burn down. Make me a house of prayer. Oh, fire on my altar, never burn down. Fire on my altar, never burn down. Fire on my altar, never burn down.
never burn out Fire on my altar never burn out Fire on my altar never burn out Never burn out fire on my altar. Never burn out fire on my altar. Never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. Fire on my altar. Never burn out fire on my altar. Never burn out fire. May Never burn now. The fire on my altar never burn out. The fire on my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer.
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I believe the Spirit is helping some folks today. Yes. <laughs> amen, amen. He's there. Let me make you this clear. Because it's so easy, and I've said this for years, not, not when this just happened. Uh, but when you go through tragedy or loss or whatever it is, like I said, people go on with their lives. But you have to walk with that tragedy constantly. And it's not that people don't care, but they can only ask you about that situation so long. You know, and God is the only one that can walk with you through that constantly and continuously. But he's there. Don't you forget it. You know, they're saying they sang the song beautifully broken. It's funny how in life we do everything we can not to be broken. We want to be as put together as we possibly can. But God says, I can't help you there. I help you when you're broken. I can help when you're broken. That's where because your flesh is broken. That's why they call it beautifully broken. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful service today. God, I thank you for the great people of God. Thank you for the Ivies that came and blessed us today, God, with his testimony, with her singing, Lord, and with his playing the drums, God. Thank you for them using their talents and their gifts today. Thank you for my mother, God, and blessing her today and being with her, God. Thank you for all the good people of God that came to the house of God today, Lord, that have been blessed. Help us, God. Let the Spirit help our infirmities, for we know not what to pray for as we ought to. But let the groanings of the Holy Ghost happen within us, God, and pray for us according to the will of God. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. We love you all. God bless you. We are dismissed in Jesus' name.